Home Assistant is a dynamic, evolving system. You might edit your automations and scripts using YAML one day and a swanky, user-friendly GUI the next. The same holds true for ESP Home and numerous other widely used self-hosted home automation programs. You can stay up to date on everything new to your favorite programs by reading the following articles. Today, we'll go through the new features included in the Home Assistant 2023.2 version. So fasten your seatbelts, because this new version is packed with intriguing new features that we can't wait to share with you. So let's get started. Number eight, Assist. Straight to the newly added functionality of Assist, which, if you recall, will, in the future, make it possible for us to control Home Assistant using only our voices. Through the icon located in the top right-hand corner of the Home Assistant desktop, you will have access to the Assist feature, or from the menu accessible by tapping the three dots if you use the mobile companion app. You can begin inputting instructions from within this Assist. For instance, you can turn individual devices or entire sections on or off. Communicating with Assist using text commands. This is something that can be utilized in a variety of languages. At the moment, there are 39 of them and counting. The language currently selected for use by the operating system of your device will be utilized by default. If you wish to keep everything on the local machine for the time being, Entering commands is the only option available to you. Voice instructions issued using the Google Assistant or the Siri engine are acceptable alternatives. With the most recent versions of the iOS and Android Home Assistant companion apps, Home Assistant will be supported on both platforms. If you use them, you can say, Hey Google Assist, or Hey Siri Assist, followed by the command you want the Home Assistant to carry out, and they will do it for you. Naturally, it is possible to utilize any gadgets that are compatible with Google Assistant or Siri, and there are a lot of these gadgets, like smartwatches, smartphones, tablets, voice assistants, set-top boxes, and the list goes on. Link will take you to the default sentence pack of Assist, where you can view all of the fundamental commands, such as how to turn on and off devices and regions, adjust brightness and color, and so on. You can build your own sentences in Assist, and those sentences will be able to perform individualized tasks for you. The permitted sentences or commands in Assist are derived from text files and predefined examples. This indicates that if you wish to have many ways of turning anything on or off, you can do it using a custom statement. It is also possible to write an entire script or to initiate an automation with various actions that will be carried out because you stated simple customized phrases or instructions. Link to the GitHub page for more information on this. After all, this is only the beginning and we have no doubt that other fascinating developments in that field will emerge in the not too distant future. Number seven, other noteworthy changes. There is a lot more juice in this edition. The following are just some further essential changes. Your regions can now also have aliases added. This is used by our newest feature, Assist. You have a WH energy sensor, but you would prefer to be KWH. The entity settings now allow you to modify the units that are used by the energy sensors. Based on the current entity state, each entity on the front end has a unique color. We now formally support adding themes to them to modify them. The most fantastic integration of all is improved. Your Oral-B toothbrush's battery level is now supported by at lash L. The numeric state conditions and triggers in the Automations and Scripts UI now permit selecting other entities for above, below. Thanks, at Car Wasps. Now that cameras may be found on the network and FLV broadcasts are supported by the Rio Link integration, binary sensors are even more crucial for things like doorbell presses, motion, human, and vehicle detection. Thanks, at Starkiller OG. Number six, updating devices and visit button. You can update your ESP home devices directly from Home Assistant. 
beginning with version 2023.2 and all subsequent versions. And as a finishing touch on the ESP Home, the Visit button located within Home Assistant has been modified. When you select it, you will be taken to the web server associated with the ESP Home device. The ESP Home dashboard will be opened instead in the event that your ESP Home device is not set up with a web server configuration. Before we go ahead, subscribe and leave a comment saying I subscribed and I will personally reply to your comment. Number 5. API Password It is strongly recommended that the API Password option not be utilized anymore in the ESP Home configuration. Up until now, if someone got a hold of your API password or you shared it with someone else, the entirety of the traffic going through ESP Home would have been rendered in some way unencrypted. If you have API passwords defined and are using Home Assistant 2023.2, a new repair notification will appear. This notification will request that you change your configuration to remove the API passwords and utilize instead the encryption key. And that encryption key, as we have already mentioned, will be used automatically by Home Assistant, and you won't have to care and worry about communication encryption any longer because it will just function. It will be automatic. Number four, better ESP Home integration. Back to the new features that have been added in Home Assistant 2023.2, where the next one is kind of significant, especially if you're using ESP Home devices. As of right now, the ESP Home has become even more integrated. If Home Assistant's ESP Home dashboard add-on is already installed on your system, you won't have to worry about that process again, and you won't have to manually copy and paste the encryption key when adding new ESP Home devices in Home Assistant, because Home Assistant will be aware of it and will fetch the encryption key automatically. Number 3. Sensor Groups The next new thing is a feature called Sensor Groups. If we go to the tab labeled Helpers, we can form a collection of sensors, numbers, or number entities. This is an excellent method for keeping track of several sensors simultaneously and doing operations such as adding or averaging the values. Suppose several averages are being calculated and one of the sensors suddenly becomes unavailable. In that case, it's also possible to enable the option shown below labeled Ignore Non-Numeric Toggle, which is a feature that can be particularly helpful. If this switch is activated, the sensor will be disregarded, which will keep the data from having any inaccurate readings. This switch to ignore non-numerical inputs can be helpful. You may also change the kind of the group by selecting it from a drop-down menu allowing you to tailor your sensor group exactly how you want it. Be sure to comment on their favorite part of the video, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more home automation videos. Number two, streaming history. The next brand new function is called streaming history. In other words, the graphs we previously viewed in the history section are now changing live, and you can watch them alter in front of your eyes. This may sound like a minor adjustment, but in reality, it is not. In fact, it is not. And yet another functionality has been added to this domain in the most recent releases of Home Assistant. It also helps write less data in the Home Assistant database, which prolongs the life of your storage by reducing the number of times it needs to be refreshed. Which is really great, if you ask me. Don't you think? Number 1. Sensor Precision the first new feature in Home Assistant 2023.2 is the additional capability to modify the sensor precision directly from within the Home Assistant user interface. This is probably the smallest addition to Home Assistant this month. Suppose you have sensors or entities that include digits after the decimal. In that case, you can now decrease or raise these digits to any number you choose. You are not limited to just the numbers between 0 and 9. Keep in mind that this change impacts not only your dashboard, but also everything else that makes use of the updated object, such as automations and scripts. It is not confined to just your dashboard alone. What do you think of the video? 
Let us know about your favorite part of the video in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more home automation videos, subscribe and leave a comment saying I subscribed and I will personally reply to your comment. See you next time. Thanks for watching.